It's been a fascinating afternoon speaking to our clients, to collaborators, to people from very different backgrounds about the challenges they see and how we can deal with them with regard to student mental health and the, the responses in the physical environment. The common thing that was throughout each of the presentations was a sense of community, so for student well-being and feeling part of something bigger. I think that is really helpful. Um, in terms of design, I find it really interesting to hear from the universities what pressures they're under and what they're looking for, so that as an architect we can respond to that. We've spoken to around 5,000 students across the world, about a third of them in the UK, asking them what they thought about their physical environment, but also asking them what they would change. The main themes that came out were, in many ways, very similar. The issue of avoiding isolation, the issue of ensuring better connectivity between buildings and between where students live and where they study. Of course, what we see in Edinburgh and what came out in the sprint was less um, nuanced, it had less emphasis on the commuter student lifestyle, which you get a lot of in London. You get many students in their second and third years living an hour away from where they study, and the emphasis then becomes on sticky campuses. That applies at every university. But in Edinburgh, where we are now, and in the other Scottish university cities, connectivity at distance is not so important, but the issue of connectivity and avoiding isolation within buildings and between buildings, even in close proximity, is much more important to them. Um, there was a woman in our group, Laura, who works as a support um, worker with autistic students. She was saying that autistic students would prefer to not be the only autistic student in, in a student household, that it would be better for them to have two, um, two autistic students together. And that she's also um, set up a network of, for autistic students to interact with each other across Edinburgh, across the different universities. I think the main obstacle is just uh, navigating the students we are around the people and the unpredictability of the environment going from A to B isn't necessarily the same as going from B to A. Um, so it's just kind of supporting those transitions. In a way, when you're working with the people at the top who are in charge of these buildings at the universities, um, you're getting a really clear insight into what it is that they're looking for and what is important to them just now. Um, and that with this issue of well-being, it's, it's still emerging, it's, um, it's still finding its feet and it was really keen and interesting to find that they are keen for it to, to take place in their universities. Well, it would be uh, to always kind of remember that it's about people and to consider, consider people in the design of the spaces. So it doesn't need to be explicitly well-being just um, how people use the space, what characteristics the space needs for people to enjoy that space. That we do these events fundamentally, I think um, everyone got a great deal out of it. It's fun and it's collaborative and it's more about an approach than you know, just what we do and what we can do and, and <clears throat> giving them a list of projects that we've done in the past. Um, I think this is a much more proactive way to build meaningful relationships.